Hi, I'm the Recruiting Maven and welcome back to my channel. Just want to give a shout out to all my Facebook uh, followers. I really appreciate you reaching out to me, uh, whether it's for career services and advice, uh, career coaching. Um, so if you're in need of those, please uh, make sure you take a look at the description box below. There's a link to my Facebook page. With that said, um, I'm again, thank you so much for sharing and liking and subscribing to my channel. So. Um, now moving on to today's discussion, which is a, a series that I've started as to why you're not hearing back from a recruiter. Um, really, I just wanted to, to address some of the issues that we go through as recruiters. So some of the recruiters will have anywhere between 20 to 45 requisitions. Um, and we're expected to touch them at least once a day, meaning that we have to review each of those pieces um, of the requisition every single day. So you can imagine uh, if we're not finding the right candidates, it takes a little bit longer to source for a particular position and hopefully try and find someone that is, a, is gonna be a good fit. So with that said, um, one of the, 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 the issues being that if we do say move with you as a candidate and you check all the boxes that we needed and we think that you know you interviewed really well and now we've made you an offer, the, that particular requisition that you came in through, so maybe it was a, a, um, a QA director, just as an example, um, I'm not going to close that requisition. And then what that, what that means is that I'm gonna hold off sending you a Dear John letter saying thanks but no thanks, we have found somebody that meets um, our qualifications a little bit better. Thank you for applying, please keep us in mind in the future. So the reason being that I don't close that requisition and send you that um, type of email is because I don't really know for sure if that candidate is gonna pass their background check. I don't know if there's gonna be an issue, and, and I've seen so many things. I, we could sit here and tell a lot of interesting stories um, about recruitment, but um, doesn't always work out in the end. And so I hate to close a requisition and send you that email saying thanks but no thanks, because you know what happens is if I do close that requisition and that person doesn't work out, then I have to go back from scratch and get approval to not reopen it, but start a new requisition. We can't just turn it on and off like a light switch. We can't turn, you know, as soon as that person leaves or maybe something happens and they get fired or, um, you know, whatever the situation may be, I can't just automatically turn that back on um, because there's a lot of legal compliance through the state and with in-house with um, you know certain companies um, that makes it just very challenging I again I just can't turn it on and off at will so um, again that makes it difficult so I try not to close it until I know that person is gonna work out and if they don't then I come back and I'm able to reach you a, a, in a lot quicker time frame than I normally would if I have to start from scratch get approval of that job requisition, then start to post it because we're legally um, bound to post a requisition uh, or any job posting for a minimum of three days. Mind you, there's some variances to that, but um, in larger corporations, that is what the state requires us to do. So then again, there's, the, there's these huge gaps of communication. There's these huge time lapse um, in me being able to give you some positive feedback or any kind of feedback because technically, you know, I'm just afraid something's gonna happen. And then if that other shoe drops, what am I gonna do? Um, I wanna be able to reach out to you as quickly as possible and say, listen, um, it's been, actually this hasn't worked out with a particular candidate, are you still interested? And, and I'm very upfront, I will tell you that. Um, so just just make sure that you, you're not taking it too, uh, too much to heart if somebody's not getting back to you because you don't know what is going on behind the scenes. Um, and as I've touched on before, sometimes people go on vacation and are not that great about conveying to recruiters that they're going to be on vacation. Sometimes they forget to turn on their email notifications and I don't find out until a week later and I'm, you know, been sending emails and, and trying to communicate with that hiring manager. So, you know, feel free to, to, to send me an email. I think that's always best because I live on the phone. I'm really, really busy and sometimes I don't have the time to just get back to you within a reasonable time period. So if you send me an email and say, hey, 
listen, I haven't heard back from you is, is, you know, what's going on. I'm always happy to say we're just still interviewing or, you know, and uh, that isn't something to put you off. I know some people use that in that manner, but I, I'm, you know, I, life is short. I don't have that kind of time. And, um, you know, I like to be as upfront as I can about your candidacy. So, you know, just keep, that in mind next time you're applying to a job and don't put your you know your uh, all your eggs in one basket as they say uh, make sure that you're continuing to to look around and and um, don't just wait for that one that one job um, which may or may not happen so um, please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about your career again I do some career coaching um, and you can find uh, my services on my Facebook page the link will be provided in the description box below I so thank you for your time and um, <clears throat> coming to visit me I'm sorry I'm getting over a cold so it is challenging today but um, uh, I'm glad to be here and share a little bit of the insights with you I do wish you the very best on uh, your career and have a wonderful rest of your day.